How much of this show do you think is about being Asian in America? Like, did it strike you as a show about being Asian in America? Well, first of all, the show is basically a more general idea about road rage and about rage and anxiety uh -huh. growing up or living in L.A., living in America, modern, if you want to say modern, contemporary, uh, urban mm -hmm. California existence, mm -hmm. you know. Because um, you're the one from California. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... But Although, I do, yeah. I'll say this. I don't think you could swap out the characters in this show for white mm -hmm. characters gotcha. and have it be the yeah. same. Okay, gotcha. Because that was sort of, to me, because we tend to interpret things from our own experiences and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, perspectives. It was the most Korean, <laughs> like... <laughs> Yes. There were so many situations where uh -huh. I was like, oh my God, this is the most mm -hmm. Korean thing I've ever seen. Right. I thought that a lot of these experiences are very LA specific. Yeah, I think so. Um, to the Korean American experience. Yeah. The Stephen Yun's experiences. Mm -hmm. The character I found more relatable was not Korean, but it was. Ali Wong's character, Amy, she and I seem to be of the exact same age, and we both have these, like, working woman issues. <laughs> I could see myself becoming okay. that person in those circumstances. Something I I, I think about often, um, just philosophically, is is not only the the idea of, of identity, but the collision of identity in a situation mm -hmm. and in an environment, whether that's cultural, and of course it is cultural, it's environmental, it has to do with a place, it has to do with a city. So what I mean when I say if you, you can't replace these characters with white characters, I think the understated condition mm -hmm. of what's happening mm -hmm. in all of the things you just described mm -hmm. is the fact that she is Chinese. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I Chinese think American. she's Chinese American, but also Vietnamese. She's half that's Vietnamese, right. yeah. But I don't think that's in the show. It so is. the act it is. Her mother was Vietnamese in the show. Yeah, in the show. Because I know the actress is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I yeah, don't remember they that mentioned being mentioned. That. And they're oh, even okay. eating pho for breakfast or something. Yeah, but that's that's the LA experience anyway. <laughs> that her mother made. Oh, home. okay. That's I didn't, very I didn't get that scene. Ah, okay. Yeah. But there's little scenes like this. There's mm -hmm. little moments like that where all of this kind of crops in, but. So my point being that I know, like, you know, the Chinese-American women who feel that pressure of succeeding. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There's another pressure that was um, constantly mentioned, sort of like there was an underlining pressure for the Stephen Young character, Danny Cho. Yes. So so to go to him. Yeah, go ahead. What, what do you think the pressure is? The pressure what is... What is the most Korean male thing? Take care of your parents. Yes. So he's the first son, right? Yeah. And for me, and, and I've said this to somebody, I said this, you know, not necessarily like I wasn't bragging about, you know, mm -hmm. this pressure that my culture has, because it's a little bit pathological. And then some white man got really offended. And he was like, well, you think like you're the only people who take care of your parents? And I was like, obviously not. I'm talking about a culture that puts an enormous amount of pressure on the first son in particular, usually, to be the solid rock of the entire family mm -hmm. um, throughout the entire show. And he doesn't have that capacity because, first of all, he's not of a generation. Uh, he didn't go to the right schools. He mm -hmm. just doesn't have the right personality. He doesn't, he can't do it. But he's still trying. That's why all of this happens, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's just so many levels to it. To uh, relate to these characters, but then the you know the inciting incident and the kind of condition of their tension between Ali Wong's character and Stephen Yun's character is this road rage incident, mm -hmm. and it becomes this game of revenge between the two of them. <laughs> so they constantly try to one up the other without knowing who the other person is, mm -hmm. and that's that's the show. But then there's a whole series of other characters. There's all these obligations that they have. They can't let anybody know what they did mm -hmm. because it was a pretty aggressive in the first episode incident of Road it's, Rage. It's, it's just insanity. It's ins yeah. And it becomes absurd. Yeah. It's absurd, but I can kind of understand how Because we all have these feelings of anxiety <laughs> and then something happens and we just need something to fight. We need someone yeah. to fight against. We need someone yeah. to blame. We need someone to... Let out our frustrations and vent our negative Because it energy. turns out, I feel like it turns out, it wasn't even about either of them. You know? Right. And they kind of, um, 
they know this. Mm -hmm. In the midst of all of this yeah, going they on, this. they yeah. both of them are, both of them are kind of aware of what's going on mm -hmm. and why they do what they are doing what they're doing, mm -hmm. and we get glimpses of their trauma. Mm -hmm. And I would say that both of their experiences are very Asian American. So I kept on saying, oh, this is the most Korean thing I've ever seen. I want to correct that and mm -hmm. say this is the most Korean American thing I've ever yeah. seen. Um, two very distinctly different experiences, I would say. Um, on the surface, they may look like, you know, I mean, we all eat kimchi and we have to take care of our parents and whatever. Um, but they, the parents usually, and the, and the generation that um, Stephen Yun and Ali Wong are, they're both my age, we're 40. Mm -hmm. I think that's significant too. I think because so too. Because we are the first generation, and they talk about this during their weird mushroom trip or whatever mm -hmm. that was. Uh, their, their berry trip? Yeah. Um, they're the first generation to have had no internet and then internet, mm. you know, it, and last generation to not have had, you know, the internet, whatever. And they were just guinea, we were just guinea pigs. Yeah. And then we just graduated college to a recession. <laughs> and then mm -hmm, there was like mm -hmm. a recession after recession. And, but then we have these parents who expect us to take care of them. I think, right. I think that's sort of universal. I don't think that's just Korean or Asian. Um, I think that experience is the early millennial experience. Mm. Um, those I think it's more were, acute though with with Asian families. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah because and, because our parents immigrated there without knowing English, they sacrificed a lot, and they had a bunch of us. <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, <laughs> thinking that we would take care of them. Yeah, and in in America, when you live in America with a parent who doesn't speak English very well, you end up parenting your parents very yeah. early in life. But then this thing happens where I think. Because of the rapid, hyper-accelerated mm -hmm. change in life, I think the parents think that for the for their kids, mm -hmm. that, that it's the same rules. Yeah, and yeah, it's for not sure. the sh the same environment. And right. so there's this expectation mm -hmm. that I think it's really hard for young Asians to meet up to Definitely. without, and their parents not realizing mm -hmm. how much has changed, maybe, yeah. and how much we have how much baggage we have by the time we're adults. Like mm. somebody once told me, um, and she's an Asian American, very much like Ali Wong's character. Mm. Um, I spent so much energy growing up. Like her family had a business in LA that she helped run since she was in middle school. Um, she was constantly, like she was going to court and translating for her parents when she was 15. Um, she ended up going to law school. And that's the kind of thing that immigrants experience, mm. um, especially when your parents don't really speak the language and mm. they, there's a vulnerability there. They're very far away from their motherland. And you kind of, you, you're worried about them and you're, you know. Mm. But there are several several other, this was like a very pan-Asian American it experience, the show, so. because it addresses something that, most American TV shows lump Asian Americans together, and this show totally divides the experiences because mm -hmm. there is, on one hand, Stephen Young I, I, and his brother Paul, Danny and his brother Paul, very, very Korean American, SoCal, Korean American, 1.5 generation, right? Mm -hmm. He moved to, to America when he was 11, um, you know, had a rough time. The brother had a uh, easier time because he's younger. He was right. younger and see, he assimilated better. Um, he was also kind of more jockey. I don't know, like mm -hmm. <laughs> that probably is taller and, you know. Getting into Bitcoin and yeah, thinking he's yeah, becoming yeah. rich. So he's more <laughs> of an American yeah. than his big yes. brother is, right? But his big brother has sort of these archaic, you know, Korean values of taking care. Oh, no, I'm going to be your Hyung, your brother. Mm -hmm. And I'm the Hyung, so... You need to listen to me, and I need to lead you into something. Right. So he ends up sabotaging yes. his brother because he really desperately needs to play that role to yeah. validate himself. Right, right. 